We felt that it was important to make a movie that was grounded, that felt real, like that felt it could happen anytime soon in the world that we're living in. And I think that was the key. I think uh, that was the key to, to making something that can be scary because it feels very uh, relevant to the world that we're living in today. Hello, how are we? Wonderful, how are you? Pretty good. Wonderful, still on a high from having seen Megan last oh, night. Oh, good, oh, this is great news. I laughed, news. I cried, uh, gasps were also had. Um, <laughs> now, I know, uh, even though I came in being like, I'm going to ask all these questions about Megan, her, it, self, uh, I was told, no, don't do that. So instead, <laughs> instead, I will just ask, when you first thought, hey, we should have like a killer doll, but for real. How much crazier did it get? And how much of that was due to like Akella? How much due to um, directing, you know? Right, I mean, well, we knew going in that we wanted to make a, you know, a, a killer doll movie that was different to all the other killer doll movies, right? Like firstly, uh, Megan isn't possessed by some supernatural entity, uh, not by some supernatural serial killer. Uh, and, and we wanted to lean into something that was more of the real world, something that was more relevant to what's going on today with all this AI technology that is um, percolating, that is now sort of coming up to the surface that we're seeing every day in our, in our sort of, in our world. And uh, we felt that it was important to make a movie that was grounded, that felt real, like that felt it could happen anytime soon in the world that we're living in. And I think that was the key. I think uh, that was the key to, to making something that can be scary because it feels very, uh, relevant to the world that we're living in today. Um, that, at least that was the, uh, the, the, the sort of mission statement when we sort of uh, dive into it. I mean, I think that it succeeded in that mission statement. Well, that was a mission statement that we set for Akela, who wrote a terrific script, you know, like darkly humorous one moment and then and kind of like frightening in the next moment. And then, and then to have Gerard come along and just, you know, he did his magic with it, you know, bringing the whole movie to life, bringing Megan to life. That was no small task to bring that doll to life. Jason, of course, the dancing has already gone viral. We're all obsessed. But there are so many musical moments or cues in the film that are just like, I blow my mind. And like, I'm like, who who was in charge of the playlist? How, what was the, um, like was the metaphor? The no layers on layers. Do you know who did, 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 you, did you do them? Who, do, who, who was? was it's that Gerard. Gerard. It was it's Gerard. Gerard. It's yeah. Gerard. It's all Gerard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you dressed up as uh, Megan for Halloween. I did. Uh, I hope that this means that we'll be seeing much more Megan in the future. Could this be uh, uh, the beginning of another insidious? Oh, you mean more Megan? Yes, more Megan. Uh, we Megans. hope so. I mean, we we don't want to be uh, we don't want to put the cart before the horse. But uh, but if the movie does, if the movie if the, if a lot of people love the movie, I hope we can make more of them. I hope so too. Speaking of Akela, uh, she's bringing us the Nun too, yes. and we thank her for it. Malignant too. Are we getting this? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, we have a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, Malignant 2 is not necessarily at the top. Of it. <laughs> no electric boogaloo? <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're definitely keeping Akela very busy. I can tell you that. Yes. <laughs> One of the things I love, not just about um, Megan, but about Blumhouse films in general, is that they often toe the line between like, horror or horror comedy, but then also that emotional heart or philosophical heart at the center. Uh, what is kind of like your ethos when you are collaborating on a project? I look at um, so many, and Me Megan is no exception. I really tr always frame movies when we're thinking about making them or not. I really think of them as like indie movies. And I always say to our group, like, if you took out the scares, is there a great, Sundance drama that exists here. One of the reasons I love horror is because you can you can kind of sneak these 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 oddball stories into to a mainstream audience, and that is I think that's really fun about horror. And Megan is no exception to that. But that's what I look for. I look for like, is there a great indie movie here that uh, that that works without scares? Um, and that's often a litmus, a litmus test we put the scripts through before uh, before we decide to make them or not. I love that, because when I go see one of your films, I'm definitely like, okay, I normally wouldn't see this, but it'll probably make you think about something. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank exactly. you, guys. Thank you. It was so much fun.